Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Pinecker, and here we are for another segment of Show and Tell with Brent Ashworth. And of course, we're naming it after the book that was uh, written. Uh, and uh, this is about his history, his life story, uh, a, lot, a lot of cool photographs and uh, writings and descriptions of items in his collection. And it was written by Tracy McFarland Fieldstead. So if you can get your hands on a copy of this, it's a great book. I recommend it. Uh, Brent, welcome back to the program. Oh, hi, Steve. How you doing? Good to be with you. Good thing. Yeah, it's always glad to have you on my program. I love, uh, you know, talking about these items, and I know my audience enjoys it too. So, right. sir, what do we have today? Well, I brought the uh, the original publisher's ma manuscript for uh, James E. Talmage's Jesus the Christ. Oh. Um, and uh, this is a uh, this is very unique because it was, as you know, he. Uh, was given a, a room in the temple by the uh, First Presidency at uh, one time to uh, uh, write up some of the uh, uh, lessons he had given earlier about uh, the history of Jesus Christ. And uh, he felt the inspiration of being in the temple, and uh, he wrote a, a longhand version of uh, what became uh, the book Jesus the Christ in his own uh, handwriting. Much of that was in pencil and pen and so on. And then he uh, he uh, had a typewriter in there, and he typed up the uh, manuscript that I have uh, in the temple, and it was the uh, the uh, publisher's manuscript, which is what what we have. Uh, and it was nobody knew it existed until about uh, 15, 20 years ago. A friend of from New York tipped me off, a collector, and uh, uh, the family I contacted them, and they were wanting to uh, to uh, sell it, and I was able to acquire it at that time. Uh, it was quite expensive, but uh, I was happy to do it. When it's one of those uh, loan deals where I had to go out and get a loan. But uh, I, uh, it's one of the great pieces uh, that we have. And uh, uh, it was found uh, when um, uh, John Talmadge, the youngest son, died. And his family was going through uh, his things. Uh, and uh, they found a pillowcase uh, wrapped in twine. And uh, in the pillowcase was the original publisher's manuscript of Jesus the Christ. Uh, the church has the, uh, the handwritten one that he left up there, uh, but we didn't know the, the publisher's manuscript still existed. And uh, in uh, 2015, at the 100th anniversary of uh, the publishing of Jesus the Christ, which I think is still a required missionary uh, 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 book for, uh, for the missionaries going out, uh, it's in their uh, library anyway. Uh, the uh, the church uh, uh, church news ran an article about uh, about the uh, the history of Jesus the Christ, the manuscript, and how the brethren had asked him at the time, President Joseph F. Smith and counselors, to uh, and he was a member of the twelve to uh, to write up the definitive history of Jesus the Christ from an LDS uh, Mormon standpoint, and um, and of course he used uh, Farrar and. Uh, and uh, Edersheim and a few others uh, that had written about Christ over the years and other religions. And then uh, he used the inspiration that he had and uh, he felt in the temple to, uh, to fill in uh, the blanks and so on and to write uh, this, which has kind of been the standard uh, church uh, uh, history of Jesus Christ from, the, uh, 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 from our church standpoint. But um, at <clears throat> any rate, it was first published in uh, 1915 and then the uh, the article in the church news in 2015, uh, they first gave me credit for having the publisher's manuscript. And then I was later asked that, uh, by Br Brigham Young University uh, to, to, to uh, bring it down and to have it as part of a uh, 100th anniversary celebration of, uh, uh, of the uh, book and the manuscript in 2015. And um, uh, was able to show it to uh, President uh, Oaks, Dallin Oaks uh, and others there and it was a, Fun experience, but at any rate, the uh, the first page on it uh, was kind of water damaged, and so I put it in uh, I put it in a uh, sleeve. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is the title page; it's all here, um, and the uh, the second page is the uh, copyright 1915 page by uh, Joseph F. Smith. I don't know wow. if you read that. And uh, uh, and then the uh, the book starts with uh, 
the uh, the beginnings of uh, Christ's life. Now, one of the important parts of this uh, manuscript and book, uh, the reason we knew this was the printer's manuscript is because every change that was made in this manuscript only appears in the first edition. And hmm. uh, I spent about most of a year, nine months or so, going through every change in this manuscript. And uh, uh, and it only appears in the first first printing, the first edition. So this was the manuscript the book was printed from. It was a printed, printer's manuscript. And Talmadge, uh, Talmadge went through his book after it was published and made changes thereafter. But I think he did it on printer, printed copies of the book thereafter. So these two manuscripts are read as far as uh, as far as uh, Jesus the Christ goes. Now, one of the important features in uh, Jesus the Christ is that Talmadge almost said in concrete April sixth as being the uh, the birthday mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Uh, we know from uh, subsequent apostles and other works uh, like like Bruce R. McConkie um, says, well, we definitively don't know what the the exact date was, uh, but that was the date of the organization of the church in 1830. Uh, so uh, many people felt that that was uh, Christ's birthday as well. So it's had an influence uh, in many ways, including on, on that date that the, uh, the church was organized and subsequently uh, the, the idea that this was uh, organized on uh, the Savior's birthday, April 6, which we subsequent, like I say, apostles and others that have studied it don't know for sure. Uh, but uh, it was a um, uh, that's how it got started anyway in the church, pretty much, uh, set in concrete was by uh, Talmadge's efforts in writing Jesus the Christ. And it's a, it's a fascinating, uh, it's a fascinating uh, manuscript. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, like I say, a lot of changes throughout. And uh, uh, he, uh, he marks it, he's gone through it several times. He uses different color uh, pencils and pens. Uh, mm -hmm. At one point, there's a stamp on the back of one of the pages saying "Return to J. E. Talmadge," uh, a little circular stamp. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, this is uh, this was quite a remarkable find, I think, and uh, even the family was surprised to have uh, found it after the death of the youngest son. So I wanted to share that with you today. Wow, that's really, really uh, wow. And so, and you said this is just something that came. People didn't even know about this until about we didn't 10, know about years. it. Even the family didn't know about it until they were going through uh, John Talmadge's uh, estate. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's wrapped in uh, twine in a pillowcase. <laughs> you can only imagine what else, other unknown things are out there that will one day be revealed. It's very fascinating. So why don't we talk a well, little bit about- That's one of the things that lets, uh, lets collectors get excited, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These things show up once in a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, why don't you talk about the importance because of course jesus the christ talmadge this is like a really really important book in in really in the 20th century i mean it was huge and a lot of people uh, really based a lot of things on. so maybe just talk about the legacy of the book well uh the the, the story of the of the book is I, as far as i know it's the only book that was uh uh authored uh written uh in uh the temple as such. Uh, there may have been others that we don't know of, but this one, the story is pretty, pretty famous. The First Presidency uh, gave uh, Elder Tamich, Tamich, a member of the Twelve, a room, and uh, he spent most of a year, I think, uh, you know, uh, just going back and forth from this room. And uh, the, uh, the manuscript just came to him. He said that a lot of it he studied, of course, uh, these other books, Farrar, uh, Edelsheim, and so on. And uh, but he felt that uh, he felt the inspiration of the Lord is what he said as he was writing and uh, putting things down, and that story has uh, has always been uh, oh a great comfort to uh, Latter Day Saints, uh, uh, and particularly as we get accused sometimes of uh, not being a Christian religion, you know, it gives us an opportunity to uh, say, well, we uh, we are, and the the Book of Mormon, of course, is centered around uh, around Christ and and. Uh, what was, uh, uh, you know, the revelations that were uh, uh, written by uh, former prophets on this continent and so on, we believe. And, uh, and then uh, uh, through the translation process of Joseph Smith. And again, the, uh, the, the, the history of the Savior from a uh, Latter-day Saint uh, point of view is really spelled out uh, probably more clearly in this book than any other. We know that uh, 
uh, Brother McConkey, Elder McConkey went through and uh, wrote another uh, history, but I don't think it's been as popular uh, or as uh, uh, iconic as uh, Jesus the Christ has been. It didn't catch on quite as much, although it's a very important effort. And we're grateful to, to uh, uh, Elder McConkie for that. And there have been others, of course, that have written about Christ. Uh, the story of how Talmud uh, was given the room in the temple and felt inspired and wrote it down. And, and even the uh, coming up with uh, the uh, uh, supposed date of his birth uh, on the organization of the day of the church, uh, all of those things have uh, lent to the uh, um, to the importance of this book over the years uh, to uh, Latter Day Saints. And just I'm curious about the April sixth date. Was 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 this idea circulating before he wrote this book? That were there some that had speculated yeah, I, that perhaps he was born on that? I date? think there was a lot of speculation. Uh, there there were uh, uh, some that uh, claimed that Joseph Smith had said that at the time of the organization of the church. I'm not sure where you can nail that down. But there were uh, there was much speculation on uh, the birth of the Savior having uh, been um, honored with the uh, the uh, reestablishment of his uh, of his gospel in the latter days and the organization of the church uh, on April 6, 1830. Now, uh, Mr. Talmadge, he was uh, he was wasn't he a trained geologist? If I'm not he mistaken? was uh, he, he was a geologist um, and. Uh, he was a president of uh, uh, University of Utah. Uh, he was uh, quite a learned individual. It was interesting to me that he would, had only been a, an alternate member of a high council when he was called as a member of the, of the 12 apostles, but he was brilliant. Uh, he had uh, uh, gone to the old Brigham Young Academy, later gone to Lehigh University, um, and uh, got an advanced degree. And uh, uh, he uh, didn't have a lot of financial means, but he had a lot of help that uh, got him through uh, a, a very excellent education, uh, and uh, uh, he used it well, obviously. You know, I, I think of um, B.H. Roberts is also part of this time period, and how they had some interesting interactions with each other. Um, oh, uh, that's kind of a fascinating story. Yes. <laughs> Very interesting, and there were different political leanings and so on. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fascinating to read about about him. We used to see, we used to seem to have uh, uh, some real individuals, <laughs> different individuals. I I look at the uh, like Grand Richards, for instance, as <laughs> being one that was a, an exciting leader to, to follow uh, because you're never quite sure uh, what he was going to say or do, but it was it was fun. He was a, he was a fun individual. Um, not to say that we don't have those today, but we certainly had some characters over the over the generations. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, they even talk about B.H. Roberts, how they didn't they they, they right. when they gave their general conference talks, they were they were talking like a revivalist well, picture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, you know, one of the other That's things some that, interesting Roberts things too. So we oh, may want to talk yeah, we'll have to about talk about some of his stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, one of the things, one of the stories I remember is, of course, right around this time, you had these, uh, I believe, yeah, it was around this time, then the Michigan relics were starting to come across, and he actually went and investigated those relics and kind of thought that they were fakes at the time. Maybe talk about that. Yeah, yeah I did. And plus, while well, there were other things, too, you remember the uh, the dream mine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm having a, somebody on to talk about he that. He was sent down to, the, to that. I've got some dream mine, uh, some original documents and things. We'll have to talk about that sometime. But, oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, but yeah, Talmadge was uh, very interesting. He was sent down by the church to investigate the dream mine, for instance, among other things, like you were suggesting. He found, uh, he says, well, geologically, there's nothing <laughs> down there worthy of, of this uh, dream dream effort, you know, to uh, find a, a mine the ancient Nephi's la mites left to, at the time the church was struggling financially uh, to, uh -huh. to save the church. So. Uh, yeah, he was he was a he was a real scientist, and uh, he was a very honest uh, honest man. And so I think uh, his reputation is such that a lot of people uh, uh, still uh, read his writings. Uh, if you've ever read Jesus the Christ, his uh, language is amazing. I mean, his uh, his uh, a span of vocabulary he used uh, in the book is such that. Uh, uh, there have been books out uh, or articles at least about understanding Talmadge or how to read Talmadge and this kind of thing. I mean, he was a he was a real expert with the English language as well. 
uh, and I once found um, uh, one of these almanacs. It wasn't an LDS one. I'll have to dig it out, but uh, uh, they had uh, an expert. It was 1903, and they had a picture of Talmadge <laughs> in the front of it. Of course, I immediately recognized him, and they had his uh, his name later in the book, and it was just uh, they were getting his. Uh, wasn't a, it wasn't an LDS publication, but they were just getting his. Uh, his drift on uh, the upcoming year, 1903, and what were some of the developments that were going to occur? And so, um, you know, he uh, uh, he had he had uh, wide readership besides just uh, just among uh, the church members. Yeah, Bastard. a lot of people had a lot of respect for him. And, yeah, they really yeah. did. Yeah. Um, so, do you think that the Jesus that's portrayed in the book Jesus the Christ would be accessible to Protestants and Catholics, or do you think it would be a, seem foreign to them? Well, how, how is Jesus in that book portrayed or understood? Well, I think he's very understandable. I mean, he was, uh, if anything, they use it as a missionary tool because I think that it does have uh, uh, many of the, the Jesus that comes out of there is very scriptural, and uh, you know, it's kind of hard to argue with. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the others that came later, and uh, and he is he's a real biblical scholar. I mean, he he goes into I've got a copy of Ferrara that belonged to B. H. Roberts, for instance, <laughs> and uh, you know the Latter Day Saints were reading these other books quite uh, quite heavily. Uh, so uh, there's no big shocking things about the Savior in there, but uh, they do uh, he does rely uh, when Joseph Smith had uh, revelations on the Savior and so on. He does include those in his, uh, in his narrative. Uh, but I don't think, uh, uh, you know, I don't think uh, many uh, non-LDS uh, Christian readers would have a big problem with it. In fact, I think it'd be, it'd be a, another book that they might want to read, you know? Um, and uh, I can't think of anything that is uh, so unusual that would, that would be, uh, you know, questionable. So, so when we, when we did uh, an episode uh, on the on the Bible, I think I asked, "What is the Bible to you?" And so I'm going to ask you an, a similar question, because mm -hmm, sure. um, this is where we, I like to have these conversations. And that is, uh, Brent, what who is Jesus to you personally? Well, he's the Savior of mankind. Uh, there's no question about it in my mind, and uh, uh, all of our uh, thoughts, uh, uh, not not just as uh, Latter-day Saints, but people of other uh, faiths too that are Christians. Uh, it's the center of our universe, really. Uh, him and his Father, uh, and uh, and the Holy Ghost. They 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 make up the Godhead. They're all very important to us. Uh, and uh, Jesus, in particular, as we know, uh, was the uh, ultimate sacrificial lamb, paid for our sins. And uh, and he also. Uh, his atonement, which is so important, uh, also removed uh, all of the uh, the ailments and all of the uh, uh, tough things, uh, unfairness, you know, in life, whether uh, physically, uh, spiritually, or otherwise. Uh, and uh, we look to the Savior to uh, to to heal us and to heal mankind, particularly uh, particularly at this this point in our history. Uh, we never seem to get out. Of, out of uh, terrible conflicts, we're certainly in one now, and uh, the only way uh, that's going to be healed is for people to accept accept Christ. I had a I had a wonderful Jewish friend that passed away years ago, and we used to get into some great conversations over over Jesus. And uh, one day, uh, uh, Alvin uh, Siegelman was his name. He was our scientist at the company I worked for. He developed uh, natural products and things. Brilliant guy, smartest man I probably ever met. Uh, and was a was a very devout uh, uh, Jew and went to a, a synagogue on Saturday and uh, uh, he drugged me up there a couple of times and it was fun. I really enjoyed it. I got to meet Benny Ziffel, the uh, uh, rabbi, and became friends with him. We still correspond occasionally. And um, any rate, it was a wonderful experience. But one day we were sitting around talking about Jesus and he says, Brent, why do you make such a big deal out of one of our great rabbis? <laughs> And that was an interesting question. I says, well, that's because uh, Al, he's the son of God. <laughs> and uh, I don't mean that uh, facetiously. It was just funny the way, it, the way it came up in the conversation. That's right. And, uh, he's our savior. 
Yeah. I, I thought it was an interesting question I never heard before. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's always and that's like this one. It gave me an opportunity to respond. <laughs> that's great. I that, well, thanks for that. Was a good response, Brent. Good job. <laughs> and I just want to thank you so much, Brent, for coming on today's program. Sure, you bet. Love it. And uh, really enjoying these segments, folks. We're going to continue doing this uh, indefinitely. Hopefully, this will be just an ongoing series of show and tell with Brent. Uh, he's. I think we got a lifetime's worth of videos we can film, and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing. Well, thank you. Thanks, Steve. Well, uh, thanks again for coming on. Everybody, you have yourself a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell when a new uh, uh, video comes out. Also, uh, we're on all the major podcast formats. So check us out there if you want to listen to the audio. Uh, you can support me on Patreon if you're interested. And also, you can reach me at mormonbookreviews at gmail.com. You all have yourself a great day.